2023 has been a difficult year for Hollywood, certainly, and certainly a difficult year for superhero movies. However, this list isn't going to be focusing too much on that. I'm going to be focusing on what I consider to be the worst films of the year that I personally have watched and reviewed on this channel. Now, as you know, I review a lot of low-budget films as well as many cinema releases as well, so... This list is a combination of films that have disappointed me um, either on streaming, at the cinema, or even um, screeners that have been sent to me. So there's a real mix of films on here. So I do hope you enjoy joining me for looking at some of the most terrible films of the year. So thank you, as always, guys, for joining me. She's an alpha. It's a slaughterhouse. Oh. So coming in at number 10 on the list is Slaughterhouse, the horror comedy that I reviewed fairly recently on the channel, only a couple of months ago it feels. Um, and this is a film that's trying to convince us that there is a murderous sloth on the loose. Um, I just thought this was dire really it was had very little to offer the horror didn't work in the film it wasn't scary there was very little in the way of gore and the comedy was pretty non-existent it had a really stupid crazy idea that if they'd have really ran with that it could have potentially worked instead what they delivered was a barely watchable mess of a film You can be trusted. I'm standing you down, Rachel. I don't care. I have no idea what they're capable of. I need to shut it all down. Showtime! <laughs> Coming in at number nine on the list has to be one of the dullest action thrillers that I have watched for many, many years. This was a Netflix film, um, and we were meant to believe that Gal Gadot is this super spy if you like uh who's joins a group of super spies to stop these bad guys i mean the plot is dull uh the action's dull and i'm sorry but i just don't buy gal Gadot as an action lead an action heroine she it kind of works as wonder woman i get it but she just doesn't work here in this film it's really really dull and it really really disappointed me it's a great idea <laughs> So coming in at number eight is easily the f biggest disappointment of the year for me. I, I mean, I was really hoping that this Expendables 4 was going to be really an enjoyable romp and what we actually get was one of the most predictable um action movies for i mean for a long time the casting is uninspired there's nobody in this cast here to bring you to this film like the other expendables you know no exciting cast choices um the action is pretty predictable and fairly dull um and i was Super disappointed with this one. I really, really was. Got eyes on the Cassini. Looks like that ship's been underwater for years. Is that something? There's something moving in the water. I got something. Engine <laughs> fall back. Right, coming in at number seven on the list is the low-budget science fiction film that stars Tom Sizemore, Battle for Pandora. Uh, this came on the back of the new Avatar film that came out late last year and ran into January. Uh, it's got nothing to do with Avatar other than the Pandora in the title. Um, some terrible, terrible special effects. Um, in probably one of Tom Sizemore's final performances, all you really get to see of him is like sat in a seat talking. Um, there's very, well, there's nothing to recommend with this one, to be fair. Doctor, did you say he is? It's okay. Come close. I won't hurt you. 
Right, coming in at number six on the list is the first Scott Jeffrey produced film on this list, but I can promise you it isn't the last. It's been a stellar year for Scott Jeffrey for producing terrible films. I mean, most years are terrible. Uh, it's a good year for Scott Jeffrey to produce terrible films. This one in particular is about an alien invasion that only really involves a group of people that break into some scientist's house for some reason, only to discover that there is some alien in there for some reason. Um, so it's not really an invasion. It's not really much of an alien, and it's not really much of a film, to be fair. When do you see the power will come back home? I thought it would be by now. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> We need to stay as warm as possible. Right, coming in at number five on the list is a dull film called Snow Falls that focuses on a group of friends in the new year that stay at a remote house uh, during um, a blizzard. The, the power gets knocked out. They don't have a great deal of supplies. They can't get any help. And they slowly start, you know, falling to the elements. Um, sounds interesting, doesn't it? I can promise you, though, this film absolutely is not interesting in any way, shape, or form. It's dull, dull, dull. Um, the performances aren't great, the concept isn't interesting, um, and it's a pretty dull affair to watch throughout. See, your poor mother didn't deserve to die the way she did. She was mauled to death by dogs. Dogs? Right, coming in at number four is a film called Werewolf Cabal. Now, this is the cheapest film, I suspect, on this list, um, and the worst looking film, and the worst acted film, and the worst everything, really. I mean, this film, there is, it's probably even the lowest scored film. Um, but you kind of know that going into this film. As soon as you turn it on, you know this is massively low budget, but that doesn't excuse what is, in fact, um, a pretty much a joke of a film. There's nothing to recommend here. It's not scary. The performances are terrible, and there is absolutely nothing here to recommend. Now, coming in at number three is the infamous Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey that um, got everybody's juices flowing at the beginning of the year. However, not really anybody that knew the inner workings of this film. It was a Scott Jeffrey produced film. And even though I remember saying in my review that there was a massive missed opportunity here, um, they absolutely dropped the ball on this one. They could have made a really fun uh, and interesting horror film. All they did was a really dull, predictable and by the numbers horror film with somebody wearing a Winnie the Pooh outfit. Pretty terrible all round. Cheers. So, coming in at number two on the list is another Scott Jeffrey film. I can't remember if he produced this one or wrote it. Either way, he's involved in this film, uh, and it's Mega Lightning. Uh, one of those these natural disaster films that he likes to do that has zero effects in it that are of, of any interest uh it focuses on a small group of people um and a serial killer and they're all kind of caught in the middle of this mega lightning storm um poor acting terrible effects and what else can you say it's just not very good And Scott Jeffrey 
has taken the top three podium spots this year because this number one on my list is Fine Edo, another stock Scott Jeffrey produced film. And basically, this is Mega Lightning, but with a Fire Nado instead. Sounds cool, doesn't it, a Fire Nado? Trust me, it absolutely is not cool. Um, it's the same idea of Mega Lightning. It's just this time round, rather than being a serial killer involved, it's like a group of criminals that want to break into a house to get some money. Uh, focusing on a small group of fen friends involved uh, at the backdrop of this fire-nado that these imbecilic scientists have um, basically started at the beginning of the film. It's a hard film to explain only because it's dull as dishwater and I've tried very hard to push it to the back of my mind. Um, either n the one at number two or even number three or the one at number one. I mean, you can interchange any of them. They're all pretty terrible. For me, the biggest letdown of the three, and I thought there was a huge amount of potential, was the Winnie the Pooh one. Um, I thought they could have done a lot of, you know, something really interesting with this one and really broke through. I do believe they're doing a sequel, but I would expect it to be more of the same. Um, they're not going to change the formula, really, are they? So, yeah, lots of films, really, to avoid there here on this list, guys. Let me know in the comments what your top 10 worst films of the year are. And stay tuned for the channel for plenty more content running up to Christmas and beyond.